welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. I really appreciate you guys clicking on this video. So if you clicked on the video, it's probably because you like Shelby Cobras. I know the cool thing about the Shelby Cobra is it doesn't matter what type of car you're into, everyone loves a Cobra. I've dreamed about Cobras my entire life. So that's why I went and built my own. I 100% cannot afford a real one, but having a replica is the closest thing I can do. Uh, so I built this one basically from scratch. I got a bunch of parts. Uh, it's an old classic motor cars uh, style Cobra. Uh, it has a little bit of a Street Beast influence in it, which is another like late 90s, early 2000s uh, replica company. These are the guys that basically paved the way for Superformance, Backdraft, and Factory 5. Uh, these were the guys that kind of started the replica. Well, replicas have been around a long time, but these guys were the big ones in the late 90s and early 2000s. So I ended up picking up this kit really cheap and had a lot of missing parts. And I had to hand make a lot of things. I put a 4.6 liter V8 in it and it left me stranded the other day. I actually have a video series called The Cobra Left Me Stranded. It literally did. I was stuck maybe a mile, a mile and a half from my garage. So I had to find an interesting way of getting it back without using a tow truck, which if you check that video series out, you'll actually see it. So what I want to do today is I want to get the car up in the air. I want to see what's going on with the fuel system. I want to modify the fuel tank because whenever I put fuel in the tank, uh, I had a problem with the fuel shooting back out and actually getting all over the car. Uh, I want to try and fix the filler neck and then I want to see what's going on with the fuel pump. The first thing I want to do is I want to get this car up in the air and let's see what's going on underneath. But before I play this video for everyone, don't forget to turn on your notifications so you can see some future updates on my channel whenever I post them. Thank you again everybody, hopefully you enjoy. All right, I grabbed my flashlight. I'm just taking a look under the car. I'm just looking over a few things. I had to make, for example, this sway bar bracket. I noticed the oil pan. It looks like some antifreeze is getting on the oil pan. I didn't expect that. Here's my fuel filter. Doesn't look like anything's wrong with the lines. I was worried about seeing some sort of fuel line damage, but it looks like everything is fine. Huh. Well, if you look at the brackets that hold that pump, they look like The rubber melted. I bet you this pump is overheating. I was worried about, if you look right here, the fuel line is here, but it has to travel upward to get to the pump. And I was concerned that that upward travel is the reason why the pump is having an issue. But considering those brackets right now, I'm really thinking that the pump is a problem. I'd rather just change the pump than mess around with this. I'm gonna see if I can find an inline pump that can work above the tank that doesn't need to be below the tank. So the other problem I have is if you look right here at the fuel fill, it makes two sharp turns. And those two sharp turns are the reason whenever I try to fill this car that the fuel shoots back out. I want to make that more of a smooth transition, so that's what I'm going to definitely work on today. Okay, in case you're wondering why I'm leaving the tire in place, I want to get an idea of where the feller neck is going to lay, so when I make the new pieces, I know they are not going to interfere with the tire and rim. Hopefully I can do this without having much of a headache. So this is the culprit. What I think is happening is fuel is coming down, hitting this hard, and it's shooting right back up and coming out the fill neck. I wanna make this more of a smoother transition. I'll show you how. What I did was I bought two of these aluminum intercooler pipes, where instead of it having a 90 degree turn, it's a 45 smooth turn. And I'm gonna cut here and cut here and use the two of them 
to give it a smoother transition. So hopefully this will stop the fuel from shooting back out. What I'm trying to do real quick is whenever you cut aluminum, it tends to melt. So I'm trying to clean everything up so it's a much cleaner piece of pipe. I'm not finished yet, but that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to take these two 45s and put them roughly in the same position as the beginning and the end of this 90-90. So this is what I'm gonna try and work with now. Hopefully it flexes a little bit up there. I was slightly concerned that not having a ridge on the end of these would be a problem, but it seems, seems okay. You know what I'm gonna do? Let me put it up there and we'll tighten everything up after we test fit it. Okay, I'm gonna put everything in place and see if these will all line up the way I need them to before I tighten them instead of trying to tighten everything up first. Yeah, I think this will work. I just have to shorten this big filler neck. Okay, that's definitely a much better transition. So basically, before the fuel would come down, hit a 90 degree turn, go into another 90 degree turn, and then come down to this filler neck. Now it has a much smoother transition. It's almost a straight shot now. There's a slight curve to it, but now I don't have to worry about that happening. Okay, so I'm very excited that we were able to fix the fuel fill problem. Let me show you what was actually happening. So I have this Le Mans style cap. Now this original kit came with a filler neck that went right here, and it was some sort of little screw on cap. This is basically what a Shelby Cobra is supposed to have. I wanted this car to look like an original Shelby Cobra, so I decided to make my own recession. This is all handmade fiberglass, and then I put in my own Le Mans style cap. The problem that was happening is whenever you would fill this with fuel, it would actually shoot back out. So if you look at the quarter panel, there's actually dirt all over it. This is from when the car broke down. I was using a fuel jug, and when I was trying to get fuel in there, it was shooting back out, got all over the quarter panel, and then rolled into the interior, so I had to clean the interior as well. Uh, so this is definitely a load off my mind. I couldn't wait to fix this problem. Now, while we were trying to look at this issue, I came across another problem, and this is unfortunately what happens when you have a project car. Uh, this radiator cap seems to be relieving. It's a 20 pound cap and antifreeze is shooting out of this. I don't have an overflow tank. I didn't think it was a big deal. Uh, but from what I can tell, antifreeze is consistently shooting out and it's getting all over the bottom of the car. Everything is new on the car, so I didn't think I was going to have cooling system issues. At least maybe later on I could have figured something out. But hey, you know what? I caught it now. I want to fix it before it's a bigger problem. So uh, that's what happens when you have a project car. You know, you, you design something, it might not work out. You design something new and hopefully it fixes the problem. I know on this car, pretty much everything you see, I had to buy three times. Uh, this is actually the third time an engine's been in the car. This is the third set of wheels. This is the third braking system you see. Uh, the, the brake lines from the booster down to the braking system. I had to try three or four different boosters. I mean, it was a constant test fitting parts. Luckily, I do all my own work, so I was just paying for parts. And the stuff that didn't fit, I resold. No big deal. Uh, so now I have a pretty decent running car. And when I work all the bugs out of it, I'm finally going to get to the point where I can... Uh, do the body work and paint the thing. I haven't decided what color I want to go with, but I was thinking more of a, maybe a custom blue. Everybody keeps telling me stick with white, maybe with blue stripes. I don't know yet, but it's one of my choices. Uh, and I appreciate the younger subscribers that I have and you guys that are under the age of 20, even as young as 13 years old, they're messaging me through uh, 
a YouTube and telling me how they like these projects because they dream about these cars. This is why I make the content. Uh, you guys commenting motivates me and I really appreciate it. So uh, thanks again everybody and all the new projects that I'm gonna be doing to this car, I'm gonna make a video on. Stay tuned for all the stuff I'm gonna be doing. Stay tuned for the wide body Corvette video, the supercharged Miata and all the other projects I have on the channel. Uh, thanks again everybody, I appreciate you checking out Dave's World.